Hey guys, today I will be taking over the game room to do some sewing. Yes, sewing. I will be making this. So for this project, I'm using quite a few different materials and obviously scissors and a machine and pillow insides. Now I've printed out this NES remote reference and it's helped me a lot. I've marked out and measured out all the lines and uh, just to get the proportions right. So uh, I'll be referring to that quite a bit. I've measured out the portions that I want to cut out. So I'm just marking the circles and the shapes of the buttons now. So I've measured out each uh, individual element according to my, my measurements and calculations on the, the reference and I'll put a link or I'll put um, that in the description as well so that you have that handy if you want to make this yourself. So now I'm just cutting out all the little elements so that I can sew them all together and these lines have a bit of a, a rounding on them so the top line only has a rounding at the bottom and then the two middle lines have the roundings all around or the rounded corners all around and then the bottom one only has the rounded corners at the top so I'm just marking that out so I can cut that out accordingly now for these buttons I'm actually just using felt um, I could have used a more expensive material and in hindsight I probably would go for something like a leather material next time but you know felt works fine for this project and it looks okay and I'm just doing the same for the black buttons and the red buttons I'm just cutting up all of those elements now and as you can see the silver lines really show up well on the darker materials so there's a tip if you want to mark something out on dark material use silver or obviously white pen could also do I didn't have a white one so I used a silver one so now I'm just cutting out the white bit behind the buttons and I've I've measured it I think it was I timed all my measurements by 3.8 as you can see at the top corner there so I made this 3 0.8 times bigger than the reference picture essentially so now I'm just cutting out those uh, white bits behind the buttons so what I'm doing here is I'm actually uh, allowing myself some space to fold over the edges because they are fraying a little bit I want to sew them closed so they don't fray um, on the buttons or on the pillow so I'm measuring out myself a cut line and a sew line, which is really handy. So I'm giving myself, I think a centimeter and a half on each edge or on each side so that I can fold over the material and sew that closed. So the dotted lines or the broken lines are my sew lines and the solid lines are the cut lines. So I'm just making as much use of the material as I can and I'm putting all those elements next to each other and I'm also labeling it for myself so that I know exactly which one goes where. So in all in all I'll be cutting out the white bit that goes behind the select and start button, behind the red buttons and behind the black buttons. Now that that's all done I have also cut out the grey area that goes behind the buttons so I'm just placing everything on there um, to get the spacing right and to make sure that they all fit in um, as they should. And I'm also just making sure that I have allowed myself enough space around the colored buttons so that I can start sewing it all together. And now it's just a matter of sewing all the elements. So I'm starting with the white bits behind the buttons and I'm just closing all of those edges so like I mentioned before I just don't, don't want it to fray on the butt on the pillow so I'm just closing all those edges so that I can put the colored elements on top of it and this is a slow process this keeps going for hours it's it's no not hours but it keeps going for a while because you have to be patient when it comes to sewing otherwise it's going to break a needle it's going to break a thread or you know you could get your finger in there so I'm just really taking it slow I'm not a, an expert sewer at all, so 
I am just taking my time. And I'm doing the same to the grey bit uh, that goes behind all the elements or all the buttons. Um, just closing the edges there so it all looks nice and tidy. And now I'm putting the felt elements on top of those. So, so for now I'm just organizing it all and I'm just putting all the bits together so that I see that it all match together and there's enough space for all of it. And then I'm going to start pinning them down and sewing them all together so that they are nice completed elements. And I'm starting with the smallest button to test my patience and my skill and I'm just going around to the edges there and to be honest it didn't turn out too bad. Could it have been better? Yes. But again I'm no expert and this is um, pretty decent I think. And on to the next one. Now we go to the black buttons and for this I want it to be really really straight so I'm going to start with the short edge first. Oh, actually I'm going to put the buttons together first, the, the white bits at the back and then I will start with the edges first, with the parallel edges first I would say and then um, I will attach the black bits at the, at the top. So for those ones I'll start with the short edges first so I don't accidentally skew the material when I just you know go on to the, the, the long edge. So I want to keep it in place by sewing the short edges first. And I'm almost done with this one and actually I'm going to leave that. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm only going to do part of it because we still need to sew this to the grey bit that goes behind all of this. So I don't want to have too many sew marks so I'll just go on to the red buttons and sew that tight or closed once I sew it to the, the grey bit at the back. So round around we go and I'm just putting the red button on there. And now for these lines. Now I've really been looking forward to doing these lines because I know they're going to be tricky and it's so easy to skew them or to pull them or warp them when you when you start sewing them together especially because it's felt so for this I have no choice but to start with the long edge first so I'm just really taking my time and going slow here um, and I think I did okay actually it's not looking too bad I'm just gently going around the corner just lifting the I think you call it a foot up slightly while the needle is in the, the fabric and uh, then just turning it and on to the next one and now it's just sewing all these lines on there and yeah it is what it is <laughs> and now I'm just sewing on the white well I'm actually sewing on the elements now so the the ones that we started putting together and I'm trying to stick as close as possible to the line that I've already sewn on the white backs or the not the white backs but the light gray ones and yeah this is so we don't have multiple lines going through these elements because that will just look a bit sloppy Okay, now we're on to those red buttons and now I'm just spacing them out because they are the same amount of space away from the center bit than the black button is from that bit as well. So I'm just spacing it out and pinning it down and then sewing it all together and onto the black button. And so once I'm happy with where it is I will just pin that down and start again with the short edges. So I left it open earlier and I'm just closing it as I'm attaching it to the grey material. Now this is already looking like the remote and now I just need to attach this grey bit to the actual pillow. So I'm paying attention to the the spacing of where the grey bit sits on the remote and I am pinning it down so that I can start sewing it 
in place. This is exciting. We are getting to actually making the pillow now. Now it's just carefully going along the lines of the grey bit that holds all the elements and putting that on the pillow. So whenever I feel like the, the material is going to make a fold, I just lift the little foot of the sewing machine and that really helps me just readjust it. So don't go too fast because then that, you know, that way you can stop accidents from happening, you know, for example, folding material or, or stitching the material in a fold because you really don't want that. And now I'm attaching the sides of the pillow. So earlier uh, off camera I cut out the sides of the pillow and it's really just, um, I'll put the measurements down below as well, but it's really just the same material as the, the pillow itself or the, the front behind the grey area and I'm just putting them face to face and leaving about a half a centimetre gap and stitching it together and that will uh, form the sides of the pillow and this is a slow process and as I go around the corners I'll need to be very careful because I haven't cut out the corners I'm just using the same strip to you know go all around okay so now we're on to we've, we've put together the sides and the back and now I'm literally just stuffing the pillow, which is the funnest part. So I've put in eight pillows in total and it's actually really nice. It's, it's really pillowy, it's full, it's fluffy. And now I'm just closing that all in so that I can, yeah, finish this project, I guess. So I'm just folding the material in on itself so that I can close it on that one short edge. Um, and I've left myself a little bit of extra sides at the top there so that I can close that in as well. So I'm just pinning that in and I'm just going to close that up on the sewing machine. And we can pretty much call this done. I'm just cutting off the threads and yeah, that's it. This is the pillow and there's not much to it. You can absolutely do this yourself. And yeah, let me know what you think of this in the comments below. Admittedly, this turned out a little bit bigger than I thought it would, but no one's crying, no one's complaining, and this will look great in our game room.